Hi, welcome to Coding Class with Master Un. This is episode number... What episode number is it? I forget. Oh, episode number eight. So I already did... I. I already did an episode uh, about conditional statements, but I think I need to do I need to do one where I actually show you code that executes and show you how the how the code executes and what happens in the code. So I'm gonna redo this episode. It was uh, so I'm redoing episode uh, four conditional statements. So I'm going to be redoing that using uh, solo learn. Okay. So today is episode, today is episode number eight, conditionals, if, if else, if, elif, else statements in Python again. Okay. So we are in solo learn dot solo learn. The web app and first of course you have to understand booleans and comparisons so what are booleans so booleans are very simple to understand they're basically they're one of the basic in 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 terms of this is a very uh this is an important coding concept booleans or boolean data type or the boolean type so the boolean is a variable that can only have two possible values true or false a boolean can never be both true and false. A boolean can only be either true or false. And in Python, it's you must remember that in Python, the va the values true and false are keywords. And in order in order to the correct syntax is to have a capital T for true and a capital F for false. Okay. So if we look at this code example. So we have where I'm creating, so we're creating this Boolean, my underscore Boolean, and we assign it to value of true, the Boolean value true. And then we, if we want to see what's, what my underscore Boolean, uh, what it evaluates to, it values to true because that's the value put inside of it. Also keep in mind that with Booleans and condition comparisons, and Boolean expressions or, con or con conditions, the two equal signs means is the is the comparison operator for equality. One equal sign is the assignment operator. So try not to get confused. When you see one equal sign, that's the assignment operator. When you see two equal signs, that's the equality comparison operator. Okay. And if we look at some test code, we will once it loads, once we load, okay, so here on line one, okay, we create a Boolean called my underscore Boolean, and we set that value to true. If we print my underscore underscore Boolean, then we will get, then it will output in this out, output area, in the output console, we will see true. If we print, two equals three we will get a false because two is not equal to three if we print hello string hello equals the string hello then that would be true so i'll run the run it and we will see the output okay so if we print my boolean we get a true okay if we print if we look at line four if if we print two equals three well that's false two is not equal to three so we're going to get a false. That evaluates to a false. If we print this expression, string hello equals string hello, that's true because there this has the same string value. So it's true. Okay. Okay. I think we're done with the screen. Okay. We'll go to the next screen. Okay. So comparisons. So basically these conditions, when we do if, uh, if, if else, if elif else statements, essentially we're go we're going to have to have we're going to have comparisons. The computer is going to do a comparison. Okay, is something equal? Is something not equal? Okay, is not equal. And in Python, it's the 
we represent not equal. The not equal operator is the exclamation mark plus the equal sign. Exclamation mark, equal sign. So that is the not equal operator. So if something is not equal, that expression becomes true. If the if the if if they are equal, then that expression becomes false. Okay. So if we do one not equals one, that is false because one is equal to one. Okay. Is the string eleven not equal to seven? True. Okay. Because eleven is not equal to seven, so that comes becomes true. Is two not equal to ten? That's true. Right. Two is not equal to ten. Okay. If we look at the code. Okay, so we have these prints. Inside these print commands, we have these uh, comparisons or expressions. So is one not equal to one? False. One is equal to one, so that's false. Okay, if we run this code. Okay, right? One is not equal to one? That's false. One is equal to one. If we tr print this Boolean, uh, if we tr print this expression, this comparison expression is 11 not equal to 7 that's true they're not equal so we get a true okay is 2 not equal to 10 that's true 2 is not equal to 10 so we get a true get a true okay okay so we can also we can do equality not equal equal not equal and also we can do greater than or less than, okay? So, and this would be for obviously when we're comparing variables that contain floats or integers. So here we have the greater than sign and then we have the less than sign or operator. Is seven greater than five true? True, yes, seven is greater than five. Is 10 less than 10? False, they're equal. 10 is not less than 10, 10 is equal to 10, okay? If we go to our code, go to the code playground, we have, we're gonna print, is seven greater than five? True, so this rule should print true. If we print this comparison, is 10 less than 10? False, 10 is equal to 10. 10 is not less than 10. Okay, so we should see a true and then a false. Okay, right? Is 7 greater than 5? says is 7 greater than 5? True. Is 10 less than 10? False. Okay. Okay, we can also, not only do we have equal, equal, not equal, greater than, less than, we also have greater greater than or equal to and then less than or equal to okay so is seven less than or equal to eight that is true is nine greater than or equal to 9.9 .9? true okay we'll go to the code playground okay we're gonna print seven is seven less than or equal to eight what's gonna print is 9 greater than or equal to 9.9? .9? What's going to print? They should both print true. They should both output of tr two trues, okay? Okay, right. Is 7 less than or equal to 8? True. Is 9 le greater than or equal to 9.9? .9? 9 point, I'm sorry. 9.0. True. So they're both true. Okay. Okay, so we're done with that. We're done. Okay, we've done booleans. and Okay, so now let's go to... If statements. Okay, the structure of if statement is very simple. So, with it, if we want, an, if we want to, to code an if statement, we need to use the if keyword. Okay, if in lowercase if. So, if this expression or condition is true, then we will execute whatever block of codes we have here, and we know it's a block of code because it's indented. Okay, all the statements here, this block of code will be indented. Okay, so we have the if keyword. So this you would, so we would call this the if header. 
we have the if keyword, then we have the expression that evaluates to true or false. So if it's true, we execute these statements. If it's false, then we do not execute these statements, okay? If keyword, condition, or expression, and then it's hard, kind of hard to see here, but there is a colon, it's okay? If, then the condition or expression, and then a colon, and then underneath that indented, we're gonna have statements one or more statements okay so it's very important to remember to indent correctly otherwise you will get an error okay okay so we have an example of a very simple if statement okay if 10 is greater than 5 colon print the string 10 greater than 5 okay And then we go to the, let's go to the code playground and we will run this code just to remind you that we're hard coded this. So this is, this is, these are fixed values. We've used literals. So this is a fixed value. So this will always evaluate. This will always print. This if statement will always, uh, will every time we run it, this print statement will always execute because 10 is greater than 5. That's not going to change. Just letting you know this is a hard-coded example. So what is going to, what is our output? It should output, yes. It outputs 10 greater than 5, this string here, right? 10 greater than 5. Now this print statement or command is, has nothing to do with this if statement. So this will always this will always print no matter what, okay? You'll always print this string program ended. Okay, so this is, so in in general, this is, this is these if statements, these if else, if else, if else statements, this is, this is a, in a very, very simple set, simple, way to get a computer to think so in a way your the computer is thinking because it has to make a choice based on con certain conditions so in a sense you could say that the computer or the program or the code is thinking but obviously in a very mechanical way right okay let's go to okay now, in this situation, just, just showing you a nested if statement. So we can have, so inside an if statement, we can have another if statement. So, so you can have nested if statements. I would say try not to do that in your code. It's usually not, it's usually not, it's usually recommended not to do nested if statements because nested if statements are hard to read. Try to keep your if statements flat. Try not to have nested if statements. If you, you could, cause, because you don't need to do that, you could use Boolean logic. You can use Boolean logic to do that. So you could have, uh, I'll show you later, uh, not in this, uh, episode, but I'll show you later where you don't need to do that. But this is just showing you can do that. You can have nested if statements, but it's not a good idea to do nested if statements because they're hard to read and understand. But we're going to go to the code playground. And okay, so num1. So we create a variable num and we're going to put an integer value inside 12. If num is greater than 5, then what are we going to do? We're going to print this string bigger than 5. If num is less than or equal to 47, then we're going to print between 5 and 47. So it's because num is 12. So if 12 is greater than 5, which is true, so then we're going to print bigger than 5. And, and then we're going to execute this if statement. If num, which is 12, is less than or equal to 20, 47, which is true, we're going to print between 5 and 47. So, so the output here should be bigger than five, and then underneath that, it'll say between five and 47. So, so both if statements will get triggered, will execute, okay? Bigger than five, between five and 47. 
Okay. So those are if statements. Okay. So we had a so the if statement only one thing can happen. Well, only I'm sorry, only two things two things can happen. Either the if statement either the condition or expression for the if statement is true and then the statements the statements inside of the if statement get executed or they don't. Now, what if we wanted to have an option B. So if if the expression or condition is true, then we have uh, option A. So uh, so one set of statements executes, but if the but with the if else statements, if it's not true, then we can have a different set of a different block of code execute. Okay. So. What did I do? Oops. Let me go back. Okay. An else statement follows an if statement and contains code that is called when the if statement evaluates to false. As with if statements, the code inside the block should be indented. Okay. So we have the if statement here. This is the expression or condition. We have the colon. And then we have our block of code, which is only one print command. Also, we have an else. Now, if you notice, the if and the else are at the same level. Okay, so we have an else and then a colon and then a different block of code. Okay, so when this condition, when this condition is, at, is x equal to 5. So when this is false, then we, then we go to this else section. And then we will run this block of code. Okay, so if this condition is true, then we run this block of code. If this condition is false, then we will jump here and we will run this block of code, whatever this block of code is. Okay, so in this example, right, x, we create a variable x and we put the value 4 a whole number an integer inside of x so we, we check the condition we ask we are asking is x equal to 5 if x is equal to 5 then we're going to print yes if x is not equal to 5 then we're going to print no x is not equal to 5 okay so if we go to the code playground Okay, so we have the same code here, and we run the code, and this should run, it should run, uh, no, because 4 is not equal to 5, so we should get a no. No, the output is no, okay. Now, again, we can have, you can have nested if statements, and also you can have nested if else statements. I would not recommend doing that because nested if statements and nested if else statements are hard to read and understand. You can do the same thing by using logic by using Boolean logic instead. But just letting you know this is you this is possible you can do this. It's not recommended. It's this is hard to read, okay? Okay, we have num and we've Put the value 7 inside of num. If num is equal to 5, we're going to print number is 5. If num is not equal to 5, then we're going to go to here, else, and we're going to run this block of code. Okay? But inside this block of code, we have another if else statement. And then inside this else, we have another if else. So we have a whole bunch of nested if else statements. Okay? So num is 7. So is num equal to 5? No, it's not. So we're going to jump to else, to the else. If num is equal to 11, no, num is not equal to 11. Num is 7, so we're going to jump to else. Okay, oh, if num is equal to 7, now we're going to, num is equal to 7, so now we're going to print num is 7, okay? So the output here should be num, number is 7, okay? So that's what our output should be over here. Output should be number is 7. Okay, right, number is seven, okay? But again, you see how it's, this is not easy to read. 
Nested if else statements are not easy to read. Yeah, so it's not recommended, but it is possible for you to <coughs> excuse me. So it is possible for you to do that, but it's not recommended that you do. Okay. Okay, also we have now <coughs> elif is a contraction is a keyword in Python and it's a contraction for <coughs> excuse me. Else if. So instead of writing else if, <coughs> excuse me, we can just contract it to elif, E L I F. So the E L I F, elif, is a keyword in Python. Now, Python does not have a switch. Other coding languages will have a switch. So instead of a switch, you get uh, if, elif, else. So you have so if you have a multiple if you have multiple conditions you want to check for and and different sets of codes different blocks of code you want to execute depending on different sets of conditions then that's what you would want to do you would want to code if elif else and you can have more than one elif okay so there's no limit to how many elif cases <clears throat> LFs that you can have in a if LF else uh, statement. Okay, so in this one we see we have num is set to the value seven. If num is equal to five, we will print five. Else if or LF number is equal to eleven, we're going to print number eleven. So if this is true, so if this if statement is true, then we're going to execute this. If this is not true. Then we're going to go to the first elif. If this is true, we're going to execute this block of code. If this is false, then we're going to go to the next elif. If this is condition is true, then we're going to print this. We're going to print this. We're going to execute this block of code. So in so if we have a situation where the if condition, the if doesn't get triggered, this elif doesn't get executed, and then this elif does not get executed then we're going to come down to the else which is the default right so we're going to come here and then we're going to execute whatever block of code we have in here okay so let's go to the we're going to go to code playground and okay number num the variable num is set to the integer of seven the whole number seven so is num equals to five no it's not so this block of code will not get run so then we go to the first elif. Is num is num equal to eleven? No, it's not. So we don't execute this. Okay. Then we go to the next elif. Okay. We're going to go to the next elif. Is num equal to seven? Yes, it is. Num is equal to seven because num has been was assigned the integer seven. So now we're going to run. So we're going to execute this block of code, which is just one print statement. Okay. And then. Then the then this if elif elif else statement is done okay and this else this else this else section will not get run okay so the only thing that will print out is number is seven okay and if we execute the code you'll see that right the only thing we see in the output is number is seven okay because only this only this section this this only this part of the if Elif, elif, l statement it got executed. Okay. Okay. So today we covered booleans and comparisons. We covered if statements. We covered if else statements. And we also covered if elif, l statements. Okay. So I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how to, in a sense, get the computer or your code to do some very simple decision making or thinking, if you, in quotes, thinking. The computer is thinking in a very, very basic sense. You're getting the computer to think. Okay, thank you very much for, for listening to me ramble on about if if else and if elif else statements and boolean and booleans and bo and comparisons
Thank you very much, and I hope to meet you again in the next episode.